pretty much consistently throughout MSI and currently in this split as an answer to the Lee Sin because you can actually duel quite well. And for a play down towards the bottom side, Dan not yet level six, Nuke Duck neither has that ultimate. Thomas Q caught underneath the tower by himself. Spectral Moor coming up, but he's hooked out of it. And Nuke Duck no longer has the stun devour. It's going to be used by Danik. Root coming out as well. XL might continue for this. Dan flashes forward, misses the harpoon. Just uh, dashes away. Promise Q, though, will be sacrificed. Nuke Duck gets yeah. first blood. What do you call it? The, the soul take? The Sovereign's Domain? Yeah, but when you no flash on Nuke Duck either. Into the hammered path, Magic Felix lands a shuriken. Here's White Knight, all of Astralis. They're like, excuse me, can't believe you left. Flash kick back, Nuke Duck gets over the wall. But Magic Felix will they chase it. playing against this center, and I also think that this bot lane for XL, hang on, flash in. Flash hook onto Dan, doesn't have the equalizer. TP's coming in as both teams look to Barney in the bottom lane. First first kill goes to Promise you Magic Felix will answer it though. Dan is dead, Patrick trying to get away from this one. Jessica fighting off Nuke Duck and Denik all on his lonesome. The Dawning Shadow will give them a shield. It's the two for two trade so far. Denik continues to push forward though into Zanzara and into Magic Felix. New Duck on the chase has possessed that. I think that they're in a good position, but once this Divine Sundra starts to come through for Patrick, once well, the Divine time to secure a couple more stacks from the jungle camps, hitting that 60, I think pre 50 minutes is generally pretty good because then when you get to around After the 20. Yesterday's performance against Rogue, I think we wondered if they could be proactive, if they could get these leads as White Knight. Is the one making the practice plays in the top lane. TP coming in as well, and Kreis doesn't really have anywhere to go here. Doesn't expend the flash. Well done by him. Okay, we can get some deep vision into your red side jungle. We can deny you some minions. We can take a tower. We can set up in mid priority and then work their way down towards the Cloud Dragon. And it looks like Astralis may give it up. But there's TP coming in behind here. Patrick flashed in on. There's the knockup. Denik is the first target. He's still got the thick skin. There is the hellish nightmare paranoia equalizer combo coming out, but it just doesn't quite have the damage. First kill goes over to White Knight as they look for a little bit more. Nuke Duck has to flash away. White Knight burning down, but all of Astral is gonna reset. That fight would have gone in the favor of XL, but he couldn't quite get the kill needed in order to swing the fight. Once again, Magic Felix is in a very strong position. Denik. Hasn't got Flash, doesn't really have anywhere to go here. He's gonna get chased down. There's the Equalizer coming out. The Thick Skin will save Denik with the Dawning Shadow. And now White Knight might be in for a world of hurt as he's gonna have to try and dash away. Safe God use TP coming in from XL as Kreis joins the fray. Doesn't have the Paranoia as of yet. White Knight's gonna go the long way around to try and catch out these two Astralis players. And it is a long way back to safety for White Knight and Zanzara. Here's the Abyssal Voyage, a little bit short. There's the Paranoia. Cries diving in, looking for Zanzara first. White Knight going forward as well, and Zanzara will fall. The reset coming in. White Knight will be able to escape. New Duck tries to get close enough, but he won't close down on the Astralis top lane. And meanwhile, Promise Q and Magic Felix are just taking a tower in the mid lane. A lot of time was spent by Excel's fought game against SK. It came down to the wire. A single team fight at the Elder Drake, I think it was, with White Knight's Lee Sin finding that pick onto the enemy AD carry and converting it into a win. We'll see if it gets down to the wire once again, as it seems to continue being very, very close as we approach the 20 minute mark. And Patrick as well is up towards his team again. This is some of the advantages that Astralis do have, and I like this use of the TP. It's a double TP, both White Knight and Magic Phoenix are on the way. The Paranoia coming out, and there's the Equalizer as well, but already Astralis are looking to burst them down. Cry diving into the back line. Magic Felix gets one, gets two. Dan's dead. White Knight takes the third as Nuke Duck balls, and Cry is going to get chased off towards the top of this fight. Blast Cone only knocks him up in place, and Jessica takes him down. Really good and team. Fight. Really taking over team fights. Magic Felix now 4 0, 3. Two items complete. Baron. Uh, Promise Q as well. Promise Q just a little bit wide with that hook. Kreis does have TP and he's now pushing out bottom lane. But Astralis have taken the tier two in the top lane. They have a wave coming in in the mid lane as well as White Knight will start to pound down on that tower. Is there another turret to them? Five to two in favor of Astralis in terms of towers. A 6,000, 5,000 gold lead for them. Now they are working their way up towards this inhibitor line. Will Kreis TP an equalizer used to clear out the way, but that tower is already gone. Kreis now looking to get into this fight. The paranoia coming out, but Kreis hasn't TP'd. It's so late. Dan's already dead before Kreis even lands. And XL just a little bit late on the trigger there. Astralis walking straight through the front door. White Knight diving in, diving back. It's a little bit too greedy from him right there. We'll get both flashes out from Patrick and Dagger, oh, and he goes back in. Knight flash kick again! This man has a laser sight on the enemy AD carry when it matters most. White Knight finds the pick, and following up, Magic Felix gets another. Astralis with some great late game team fights.
An incredible double TP play in the mid lane. And with their second win of summer, their best ever start to the LEC. Last time, we were all the way in week three before they had two wins, Vedius. Now they have it on day two. Round out their composition with a Lilia and a Lucian. Okay. So they're going for that AP80 mid jungle. They have very strong side lane. Genix does have at his disposal once he hits level six. Now two hours may catch here. He's got it out. no flash. He only has ignite here. He's going to try and dash away with the spectral more, but two hours is here, and two hours is on. The As you say, Hibbert is on a ward here, and he didn't realize it. And here comes two hours once again. Genix with the needle work, and Hibbert is going to get jabbed with a vaccine. For now they're going to focus on scaling up, waiting for a couple more items to be completed. That will be the cannon gone for VTO, but he's going to use the ultimate to interrupt the culling from two hours. As, as well, the question is whether Misfits will be able to find some plays to get themselves back in the game, and that's what they're looking for towards the top side. Spectral more coming out, Razork running forward, and that bear slap will still connect. Needlework doesn't do anything into three players from Misfits. Here it will be given the kill. We'll see. Is Genax a good Gwen player? I'm excited to find out. Right now, Lothing otherwise is going to go down onto Razor because Treat looks to catch out his enemy man. Jez is there as well, and two hours now on a killing spree. The only Razor and the top tower will go down. They can also then use the Rift Hell to secure right. that. They're going to lose. They've already lost top. They're going to lose bot. The Herald is going to get dropped mid, and they're going to lose that as well. So it's a matter of HP. Jez is trying to come in from the bottom side. It's a pinch and pinch and pinch and movement here from SK. Treats with the swell seed. It's dodged by everyone. Flash hook. Treats goes in. A three-man sleep's going to land here. Where is the follow-up? Here goes Gwen. Vander taken down first. Jez is going forward onto BTO as well. Here we're trying to dive back in. Looking for the resets. Jez is just about The fight is about to start. Lockett could have been game-changing in this next fight. There's the true shot for Arch. It's on to two. Razor flashes in and Treats is down. No ability for that Lilia to impact the fight. BTO. A Treats rather being able to burst him down before the rest of it. Game in the jungle was caught out there and now perhaps has cost his team a Baron. Two hours. He's had a very good game so far. The needle work coming in from Janax, but he needs to get those auto attacks off to get the reset procs. Baron down to 700 secured. Genax will retreat. Yesterday as well, Vedius. A, a, a weak early game or a few mistakes in the early game. The enemy team... Getting... It's just easier for them to actually set up around these objectives and come out ahead in the fights, and especially if Misfits get a single kill. It's on to two. There's the sleep. SK know they have a man advantage right now because VTO is in the mid lane. Killer Insignia from Jezu immediately exhausted. Retreat is... Kami is down first. And here comes the follow-up. Banda falls second. The shutdowns rain down for SK. Hear it can do nothing as SK gets... Challenging two hours here. He's got three items, two hours going to try and trade into it, dodges away from the Chaos Storm, steps back into the gravity field, stunned up, and BTO gets himself in the soul bank. Here we go. This is Cloud Soul for Misfits. Jez is looking for a flank position, but he's all on his lonesome, and he's dead before help can arrive. Razork stepping in as well, the stun's going to land on the streets, hook goes a little bit wide there from Hirit, Bandit eats up the culling with his unbreakable shield. There's another sleep, gonna, okay. Hobby cleanses. He's got that yeah, a bit of a Z-axis thing there yeah. for the <laughs> Legends. Yeah. Uh, will not be able to interrupt Jezu's back, but still they will get themselves the inhibitor. Is that a TP, TP, TP flank? TP, yes, TP. it is. Here comes Gwen. Let's see what Jenets can do in this situation. Oh my goodness, no. No. That's one ult. I just built it up so high. That's oh, two ults. Here we are. He's going to face off against him. Oh, Razzle flashes in. Two hours caught out. Two hours shut down. And Jenax. I'm sorry for SK, but that TP sucked. He's caught in the middle of five of Misfits now. Here comes Genax, and there he goes, limping back to the fountain, dead as a doornail, as Misfits look to put the final nail in the coffin of this game. They will go 2-0 in their first two games here in the LEC, and even though their early games have been weak, their mid-games have been sublime. Jezu dives in, Jezu dies immediately. And only the Nexus Towers stand between Misfits and a perfect start to summer. Misfits take down SK and continue their undefeated record. Good stuff from the side of Misfits. As you rightly said, they played it slow. It's a self-made, paired with a pick we've already seen leaders successful on in the form of the Viego. And when we talk about jungle mid matchup, it feels like Team Vitality certainly have a lot of strong tools, whereas Rogue, Yes, the champions are strong, but Gragas is a big question mark for me in this meta. Oh, yeah. He hasn't taken his red buff yet. He was spotted on a ward, I believe. So I think Larson must know this, and he's hugging the top side of the map. Makes sense, but now he's burned the dash in. 
Getting a bit more space there. Very aggressive. Maybe hoping to burn the flash out from self-made. Forcing his flash early, though. Here we go. Nimbus Cloak coming in. That is one fast Udyr. Larson, what are you doing? You saw him, and you dashed forward anyway. First blood for Lee. Successful so far. Udyr forcing the TP out of SLT. I wonder if he's going to save the TP himself, as we see an aggressive trade in both sides. Going in, LeBrov taking a decent amount of damage. Hansama just continuing to rain down auto attacks. The turn be getting lower and lower. They're flashing forward. LeBrov burning down. It's the one for one now. It's the 80 carry duel, but Crown Shot has the advantage. We're going everywhere. We got two points to focus on. You got a gank in mid lane. You got Crown Shot stepping back here as the TP now comes in. Larson dashing out to safety. Spectral Mock comes in. That's the stun on your top screen. Meanwhile, Oduwamne chasing down on the bottom side, looking for the fear, willing to follow Crown Shot under the tower. It's a one for one across the map. Yeah, there's the safe TP I just talked about from Odo and just a very smart. That's right. You can pop the paranoia, don't drop the TP, and you don't even know where it's coming in. So, hang on a second. Inspire is going over the wall. Might not be where he wants to go. Now, Crown Shot's all on his lonesome, but they've locked Inspire up for now. But Inspire still has the Predator active. He's going to try to run out to safety. So, Crown Shot. the top side. There is a stacking wave of some sort, and SLT doesn't have the flash. He's holding the wave here, so he crashes into the tower. Waiting, pulling back Odoane, just moving in with a little bit extra damage. Needlework not going to finish. Is already now in the area, stepping forward. Inspired can try to run in here. A little bit difficult here. The flash out from Lebrov, not quite enough. The chain CC here is absolutely brutal as Lebrov gets pulled back in and is sacrificed. Right, so, pretty easy take for Rogue. They want to commit resources there. It's just going to be the Infernal Drake, though, taken uncontested, at least inspired in the area. Now, he is behind a little bit individually, but Gragas certainly has more team fight prowess. That said, it might not be enough. Nocturnal now coming in. He's trying to one-shot the Udyr. Odoamne is going to get one, but it's now traded back. Yeah, one for one. one doesn't have a jungler to team up with him, and this is the consequence. Midbot suffers. Body slam flash. Leader now going to be in trouble. No room to dash out. He will get taken down. I would love First to play, but now that he's got a few levels under his belt, he's been absolutely everywhere Rogue has needed him to be. Definitely. I mean, look at the gold. Almost four and a half thousand gold up in 13 minutes. Really good map movements from Rogue. And Hans is going aggressive in the 2v1. Forces out the cleanse. Now that is a disaster for Crown Shot now because until it comes up, it's going to be hard for him to fight. I don't want to trade back. Big damage can come in from the Kogma. One raining down now, but Hansama stepping forward. It's clean movement. Trimby going back under tower, and the damage from this Varus! It's impressive. The rest of Rogue now collapsing. Crown shot caught in the middle of everybody. He's going to need to maximize the passive value if he wants to come out oh, on top here. Not even a meme this time. Get that passive Hans. value. Hans dodges away from all of... But now he's more of a supportive role rather he's than a, a carry yeah. jungler, right? And that makes sense, given the champion. Glass Ferrari. He goes really fast. Odoamne in a similar boat as he tries to leap in here, but Gwen... Gwen is a powerful champion. The needlework now coming in. The good news is Larson is also very strong, coming in to back up his boy there, and they will find the kill. Yeah, interesting there. It's reasonable to expect them to come in and do demolish Rogue based on what we saw last season, based on how young this Vitality was. First time on the LEC, well, second game really, so there's a lot of coming in from Rogue. Godwemni will go towards the top side. Larson's pushing in the bot. As he goes aggressive top side, maybe Larson, he doesn't have the TP. Paranoia coming in here, Ignite, now the Stride Breaker forward, the Fear coming down is massive. SLT trying to trade back, that's the needlework coming through. Snip, snip, snip. Dash forward. Skip and slash. He has the dash up now. We're dashing in, and that's it. Snip, snip. Gwen is so busted, man. I'm telling you, it's oh my god, that's so broken. And Selfmade goes forward. in. Selfmade now trying to find something. It's Hansama locked up on the backside. It is just him. He's knocked in the midst of everybody. Crown Shot getting some good damage down. Leona tanking for now, trying to buy space for the rest of the team to retreat. It's just Leona that goes down. Leader gets a reset, but is going to fall for uh, for Rogue. That's Larson on the bot side. No. Larson, SLT now moving forward, Needlework now coming in, he is incredibly strong, Needlework last pass, oh skip my and slash! God. Oh man! Oh in that 1v1, Larson falls with two and a half items, Rogue engaging mid. Could be now getting, finding the catch, Nautilus still has a proc aftershot quite yet, so he's just getting shredded incredibly quickly, but Inspired's already been taken out, remember he's in a glass cannon, and here comes Gwen, one more time baby, but the shutdown growing, the crown shot, and Vitality Certainly have, incredible from Vitality, SLT, Taking what he could get, people just kept going for the one thing. Kogma back under the tower. He doesn't have that flash anymore. Rogue are able to grab on track with Rogue. Yeah, the armor items are stacking up. Look, like self made with the chem tank. Randuin's played steel caps. Even that's a cloth armor. He's building full. Shield, though. You have to reduce this in a fight because when you have this much tankiness and this much healing, it's going to be bad news. Now, Vitality just looking to turn and burn. It is the Nocturne onto the backside, but the cleanse comes out immediately from the Kogma. Odoamne cannot find a single kill. He's getting burned down, and Leader is getting reset. SLT is still alive on the backside. This team fight for Rogue is an absolute disaster. Desperation strike. 5v2 on the back line. Gwen is zoning them away. Diego joins the fight. The back line, he'll use the ultimate to buy time and then go on the front line of Vitality. Pushing so against Vitality so they can maybe find a way in here, but there's no chance. I think they're just gonna push me in and risk here. Rogue waiting in the darkness. But the hook gonna come back in. Oduwamne has now been caught out and uses the stride breaker away. It's Trimpy caught in the middle of everybody. That's the knockback. They're gonna be able to take the support. The TP coming in from leader, but he's a bit late to the fight. So far it's a 5v4. 
Gragas locked up on the front line. Selfie flashing away, making it out to safety. It's an incredibly bloody exchange. Han Sama now, this is where he's going to flourish. Raining down poke from afar as Crown Shot is picked off. Broke. They don't have Dragon Soul points or anything like that, so the Baron is going to put them back in the driving seat, you could argue now, because it feels like Larson is so strong. Selfmade now running in. We may just have a smite fight on our hand. 2k getting lower. That one's going to get burned down, but Inspired manages to take it away. SLT throwing the alt out, but they've split up the entire team. It's now an absolute disaster. Selfmade still alive on the backside. Moving in, managing to grab a stun. SLT still going. The Gwen still alive. Goes Golden Crown Shot untouched for now, but Rogue have taken the fight. Rogue turn it back in their favor, and they'll take out Crown Shot and shift their attention into the mid lane. That's going to be a TP. 50 seconds on Vitality. They have the Baron buff as well. I think they're going to end the game there. That was the game deciding team fight. And now the carries of Rogue were just free hitting. Vitality. Vitality just tried to overcommit to get the fight started, but they couldn't find enough kills to get the fight in a winning state. They couldn't get onto Larson and Hans in time. Yes, they managed to hit them at the end, but Larson was free hitting the whole fight. Vitality dive in. They only managed to take down Trimby, but that's going to be game. Rogue dropping the ball at around 20 to 25 minute mark, slowing the game down, being patient, despite giving up such a huge gold lead. Massive throw from Rogue, but they managed to get the win. Has been playing it in solo queue today, so that set is locked in. We could have set mid here or set top. I'm not quite sure yet. I, I won't make a decision here. I love it, Cadrill, because in the LCK, a Kali mid, highest priority mid, they're most uh, pick. Keep our eye on as we move further into this one. Still, only about six minutes into the game. Level sixes haven't even come through yet, but as expected, there's the spell shield on the set W. Haymaker, a big source of damage here. But now level oh. six coming in for Broken Blade. Clutch timing here. There's no W. The flash awake. Maybe look at the CS. Hold on a second, he might go in here. Going in, gonna get the knockback to fall up here immediately. The equalizer from downtown needs to get out of this one. The shield is coming in. Neon trying to fire back, maybe hoping to need a kill back with a passive, but Reckless can just Realize jump the back. Kill in. gold in a sense. So, broken blade. Okay. Might go aggressive here. Again, just very easy, very simple trades here. Wonder not winning out. So just continues to go yeah. against him. This does not seem like a good matchup, but now he's trying to turn it right back. Broken blade just gonna grab the kill though. Solo Bolo in the top side. Maybe Mickey can salvage it, but Kyrie's hit too. There's freshly out of base. Maybe they want to look for a dive though. Alti coming in, big damage. There's just too many members in the area. He's going to go back with the big haymaker. It's decent, but it's just not enough. Broken Blade going to grab that kill. Shaka now pushing in onto the tier two, but plates are still up and available. So in terms of net gold, overall, not going to feel too bad for G2 as Cap still just tearing down the bot lane tower. Yeah, Wonder's definitely playing weak side here. And important to note, neither him or Broken Blade have been farming. Shaka committed four members into this though is that Broken Blade now has level 11, second rank in that paranoia. And again, immediately trying to shut him down. Perfect spell shield to deny the exit. Big haymaker come in, but you just have to feel it's not going to be enough. Kyrie in the area as well. That TP might be too little too late. Oh, it's going to be a 3v1 here on the top side. Caps leaping out to safety. Caps unstoppable, oh. but he's still going to go down. They get the follow, and that's it. Broken Blade, huge flash across the wall to get the fear. Really, really good mechanical plays coming out from him, executing the 1v1 kill onto Wunder. That TP from Caps instantly matched by Nuclear Int. Smart decision there. Questionable decision one from Caps himself, but Mickey wants to make a play of his own. Flash forward from Mickey. Equalizer now coming down. They need to kill Limited immediately if they want to keep this one going, leaping forward from Reckless, he's gonna find that kill. Neon now backing off. G2 firing back, but Yanko's Nikos. hungry for blood. Neon burning! Tick, Die. tick, down. Yanko's back. on towards the top side. G2 have netted themselves a small lead here in terms of future objectives. And slightly in favor of Shaoka. The Drake's very clearly in favor of G2. Yeah, and a little Almost side. there with the equalizer. Mickey's behind him, and Shalka are nowhere nearby. Fear coming through. Excellent use of the active there on the stride breaker. Broken ultimate. Blade now running. Wonder can try to ult him, but I don't know how that's going to work out for him. All coming out just to block vision. Broken Blade now goes back in, and Wonder going to get a little highway back out. Pick up this mid tower, but G2 will be able to pick up top tower. So all in all, it will be a trade off. But G2 got a huge shutdown onto Yankos. Yeah. And of course, going scrappy and staying even in gold. Feels like a bad deal for Shaka. From the top side of the map, there's 20 seconds though, so G2 might think that they can burst it down. Shalka, I don't know, two pins or flanks on the right and the left, and here they come. Alti coming in, equalizer down. Neon gonna be in trouble on the backside. It's immediately the suplex, the dunk down. Wonder now stepping forward. Reckless in the midst of the pit. Who can get the dragon? Who can get it? It's Yankos at the end. Reckless still alive for just a moment. Reckless ends up going down, but limit off to the backside. Wonder getting peeled off. The Kogma finally unleashed to do damage, but it's too little, too late. Caps, he's already taken the Zins out. Caps leaping forward. The Alti coming out. Spectral Maul, where's it gonna go? Broken Blade off to the side, trying to buy a bit more space for the rest of the team, but it's just him who is going to get burned down. Caps still ready to commit. Mickey stepping forward. Neon will not get a chance to base if Mickey has his way. Reckless is the absolute MVP of that fight. His ultimate took three people out of the pit after they flashed on them, and crucially, it took Kyrie out of the pit. Caps, though, might look for Neon. Spectral Ma should be an easy pick up there. Gets the reset on the possession as well, and to get there, but now none of their divers have flashed, neither does their bot lane, so Mickey's engage could be crucial. 
You're right now locked up. This is the entire team. Equalizer going down. Limit taking so much damage. Neon in the midst of Wonder. Wonder where's the Haymaker going to go. He's going to get a little bit of damage back. Nuclear Ant off to the backside. Reckless Probably running as much time as possible. Reckless is already dead. Nuclear Ant is now running wild. Moving to the entire team. It is Neon with a double kill. Yanko's running for the hills. The Rumble is strong. But once they get on top of him, there's going to be nothing for Yanko's to do. Trying to turn. Trying to burn. But they both go golden. And Nuclear Ant's going to walk Caps. out of this one. Caps looking for the reset. If he kills him quickly, maybe he can get it done. But there's just too much CC. They've shut him down. They polymorphed him. He's just a little kitty Broken cat. blades off the side. Reckless is going for it again. If they want shot the knocker before the fight even starts, it's going to be everything that they need. They're going to try to get the reset coming in as well. Mickey trying to buy as much space as he can. Where are they going? That's a polymorph on the set. Set trying to get a little bit more space, but he hasn't even ulted yet. He's going to knock the Zins out back into his team. It's the equalizer down. But Caps, can he find a reset? Can they get any more damage? It's Reckless. He's untouched on the opposite side of the wall. He's the only player you need to watch, but he's just not enough. Shalka, stand strong. Shalka, turn the fight, and they take it. Elder Dragon. Else you can see G2, obviously, going towards bot side, getting a little bit of vision, pushing out bots, and responding with at least something on the map. The game on the side of Shalka. Yeah, Shalka have four stopwatches, including that Zonia's of Nuclear Ring. They have a GA on Broken Blade. They have a lot of defensive tools, but a lot of aggressive tools as well, because Neon is very strong on this Cogmore. So G2 needs to be really careful. Yang Boys tap. And everyone seems to be power spiking right now, but Schalke have the Baron, and the old is about to wear off. Broken Blade with the GA heated as well. Kira now leaping forward. That's the Nocturnal coming in. Broken Blade stepping forward. Nuclear Ant does connect with the Shuriken. It's big damage. He's immediately into the backside, but the towers can see him. The Ignite can see him. G2 want to turn this back. Broken Blade still alive. G2 holding on to their base, but they've grouped up next to their Nexus. There's no room for them to maneuver. Schalke just continuing to push forward. They've got Baron buff backing them up, and they might go for a bit more. Yeah, Broken Blade's going to TP back here. G2. There's no bolt wave, so they're gonna look for an end here. Mickey goes in. forward. Mickey, that's a big play. The TP isn't gonna be fast enough. Reckless, keep your eyes on the 80 carry. What can he get done? Nuclear Edge is still alive. Broken Blade in the meantime, he leaps away. He finds the knockback. Caps is taken down. It is Reckless versus the world, but he is not enough on his own. Nuclear Int and Shalka No Fear will find the win from a devastating loss to a win over G2 Esports. Wow, what an impressive game from Schalke after losing that dragon. Would be absolutely perfect. A champion he's known for as well. I love it. The backline dive and also... And part of the reason that, that was very possible for Schalke was because of the massive individual lead that Broken Blade put together. The question now is can Arma do the same, but instead we're going to shift Ooh. focus to the bot lane. Bit of an awkward uh, move there. As the Shield of Daybreak does go onto a minion, but the flash forward for Kaiser, he's got the cooldown up in time. Now now moving in, Hillisang backing off, but he's got a bit of a shield. Hillisang not quite going down, holding on as Bubba now returns to the bottom lane. It's a TP coming in as well from Nitsky in the mid lane as Adam's gonna get a solo bolo on the top side. 1v1 traded back. A rough, but obviously they turned it around in playoffs and in MSI. Armor now wants a little bit of revenge here. It's Alti versus Alti. Olaf on stop, but does he have enough stats? It looks like he most certainly does. Arma maybe not ready for this. Oh, oh Adam team is on the way in, but man, Adam of back to back on the solo bolos walking back under the tower. El Yoya taking some damage. Blippo on the way in, but Blippo may have stayed around too long. The leap back in. Blippo turns for the stun. stun. Kaiser taking the tower. Bear stance not available quite yet. The Phoenix not going to be in a Adam. scale a bit more comfortably. As Adam could be in trouble. No mana here is going to be the big issue. No flash right. Ragnarok available though means he can make it out to safety. Just going to walk away on this one. Throw back an axe and get back under tower, but. Look like Armut's done. They know that the ultimate is gone. Dragon has already been taken. Adam is trying to one-shot the wave to make sure that he can punish on this one, but it should be an easy dive for Mad Lions. Adam going down, Mad walking out unscathed. Yeah, the problem Adam's having here is his mid laner hasn't got really that much agency in the early stages of the game. Humanoid can just give up waves and move towards topside. Very heavy skirmisher, Akali, once she's got the ultimate, whereas Orianna, against things like Renekton, and Volibear, Akali, she can't really face check or look for early fights. She wants to scale and get one or two items. And Whippo's playing both sides, so Adam's stuck in a 1v3, but now they can make a cross map play. Forward, Ghost coming in for Whippo, important to note here, he zooms in on that one, but the lockup is there, Whippo now going to be in trouble. One more auto is going to seal the deal on the kill, they're going to grab some plates as well, but Whippo running out of time, Elioia needs to use it soon. Right, here they go. Can he do so? TP now coming into the bottom side of the map. Flash over the wall from Hillisang. Whippo's going to be in trouble. That's the stun. Whippo now locked up, trying to run for his life. Lulu can't save him on this one. Heal coming out. Whippo trying to make it to safety. Bear stance might just be enough. Now they're now leaping in, but Humanoid's going to finish the kill. Upset has no room to maneuver. In this one, the cleanse comes out, but it looks like it might be too little too late. That's the stun. El Yoyo's going to grab that one. Hillisang is in trouble. That is the double kill for him. The Olaf, but for now, Mad Lion's gonna grab a Drake uncontested, tie it up one for one. Stepping too far forward. Trouble, that's gonna be the wild. Go tries to buy himself a little bit of space, but he's gonna go down before the fight even starts. Now it's Whippo caught out as well. This is disaster for Fnatic. Matt just eating them alive. They had no reason to be there. I'm really not sure why it hit us so far against the Renekton Volibear without Flash.
Amy was trying to get a little bit of information there, but he gets punished for it. Whippo tries to save him, he falls as well. So another two kills from Mad Lines. El Yoya has the ultimate if he wants to disable oh, this tower. Arzi can now step forward. That's big damage coming in. Goes golden, buys a bit more time, but El Yoya's here. El Yoya has the flash as well. Are they going to commit? Adam in the midst of everything. Karzi oh. goes in, but he doesn't get it. Nisky for a couple of seconds there. I missed it. Small mistake, but it doesn't actually need it for the dive itself. Karzi's just over committing. Gets one popped by Nisky. And uh, that kill goes off to Fnatic. So another mistake here from Mad Lions, you'd say. They're going to get the tier one mid. Humanoid's going to get the tier one top. Tier one mid, of course. Flash. Armin has flash as well. This is more like it. Whippo will have to face check. Walking away again. Whippo does not have flash. He has ghosts. This is an easy kill pickup. Shockwave not enough. Nisky now going to be in trouble as well as Kaiser goes for the game. Flash. Kaiser waiting in the darkness. Level 10. Whippo no flash cards. He immediately leaps in. They buy a bit more space. Whippo now trying to make it out, but he's just stunned for so incredibly long. He's running as fast as he can, and he's going to live. Whippo gets the right kill. Next to him, Mad Lions tried to make a pick onto Whippo, but he's too tanky. Humor going for the 1v1 top, though. Nisky no flash. Back to the landed that he is massive. Good damage onto Nisky. Trying to dash through. Trying to finish the job. Not going to let him walk away this time. Making up for cards. He's earlier mistake. Over side then. Humanoid can just dive wherever tries to catch the waves. Even with Kaiser next to him, it would be even easier. All El Yoya. So this 1v1 was just clean. Look, it's just a straight up dive with no wave. Humanoid so far ahead on this Akali. If Mad Lions play around him, this game would feel a lot easier. The mid play doesn't go in their favor. But Nisky without flash can't really touch Humanoid. Didn't have the ultimate from earlier on, obviously. Used it to save Whippo and take down Armut. Maybe if he had the shockwave there, he could have done a bit more. Certainly. And. Uh as Humanoid works towards the Zanias, it's only going to get that much easier to make these aggressive. In the meantime, as you said, Tempo in the grave. Armut already taken bot lane tier 2. Everything turning against Fnatic in that one. They were 4k behind moments ago, and now they're 6k behind. Yeah, that whole sequence for two minutes was really not Fnatic favorite. Upset lost his flash. They didn't get top tier 1. They got barely shallow vision in the top side jungle of Mad Lions. And Mad Lions or in the case of Humanoid, if you're ahead of the clock on items, Upset and Hillisang have to be so careful here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Going over the wall, just leaping in on the upset, trying to buy as much space. Arma goes over as well, but their attention is split. You've still got three members stuck in the pit here. Whippo going forward, a bit of a scattered call coming in for Matt. Adam can just run straight into that pit, but I don't think he's going to. Elyoya flashing back over the wall. It is absolute chaos. Humanoid going back in, but it is the Baron over to the side of Matt. Oh. And now Humanoid just looking to style. That's Nisky taking down. Humanoid still alive. Goes invisible, takes out upset as well. It's the double going over to Karzi. One kill going back to Humanoid. And now Whippo's in trouble too. He doesn't have a flash. The ghost now burned. He has to run for the hills. El Yoyo just looking to finish the job. Everything again going in the favor of Mad Lions. It was a scrappy fight, but they get the Baron. They get the kills, and they're moving into the mid lane. Humanoid absolutely styling on Fnatic. Dodges away from the shockwave and solo kills both of the carries of Fnatic. Yes, Karzi was there to help. Hang on. Maybe Kaiser might die here. Adam does take him down. Humanoid versus Adam. Adam has a fully stacked Conquer. RuneScape dueling and Olaf, not the best choice. But the Axe will go wide. That's going to be big. Humanoid can try to fire back. Humanoid has the option. Do they want to play towards top or bot? Looks like they're playing towards top. And Humanoids won't be wanting Adam, but Upset and Hillisang are around. He needs to be careful. He goes back in, trying to get some damage down, but there's the Wild Growth. Immediate shutdown. Gold over to the Olaf. Well played by Fnatic. Humanoid a bit too cocky on that one, but in the meantime, his team is getting work done. That's going to be at least one inhibitor tower knocked down, so all is uh, not lost there. That's the advantage and the disadvantage of 1v1. You, you play on more lanes so you can punish over extensions, but you're very vulnerable because your resources are spread thin. You, you can get caught out on side lanes, and that does end up what happening. They get the bot tier 3, but Kaiser might fall as well. Once he comes in, the health picks as well. Kaiser just getting run down here. There's absolutely no way to get away from this Olaf with so many movement speed steroids. Adam, an absolute monster if he's allowed to just auto attack. Yeah, Matt Lines. Getting caught a lot here with this Baron. They do manage to get bot tier 3, they almost got mid tier 3 and they got top tier 2. Now Humanoid might want to punish Arm Adam back. Double TP now coming in, Armut on the way forward. Adam gets some good damage down, but there's no way he can win this with more health coming in. He's going to try to run to safety, the flash back out, the Gore Drinker to heal. Now Hillisang is in the area, the shield coming in, the Whimsy as well, he's running, but he might not be fast enough. He has to turn and he will go down. Here, they do not overcommit, they've got more than enough wave clear with no Baron on the side of Matt. But Matt are strong and they are not scared. They're just going to walk right into the base. Solar Flame managed to connect, Kaiser now going forward. Whippo going to be in trouble. Wave. Just barely able to make it out. Karzi trying to finish the job, but he can't quite get it done. Upset now stepping forward, knows that he's uncontested for now. Armin having to dash back. Back out to safety, but eyes on the Kogma stepping forward. The damage is good. The team is there to back him up, and Humanoid cannot find a way into this back line. Yeah, Humanoid didn't have ultimate up for this fight, so he couldn't really get involved. TP. TP coming behind. That's Adam. Bit of a slow, but it's not going to connect onto Adam. Adam now walking forward. Humanoid should have the tools. He has the ulti now. Has to use the first stack through a champion, though. Can't just leap out to safety. In the meantime, it's Cloud Drake going down. Soul point on him. Niski will know, but this Baron's just gone. It is gone. Fnatic just cannot get into the area. They have to stay as a Kaiser. Oh, yeah, pushing in mid, trying to get the mid inhibitor. Mad Lion sieging towards his top side. 
Maybe Adam wants to find an engage. Down under Arma, double dash back out alongside the Star Breaker. Now Karth is going to be in trouble. He can try to reposition, but only the enemy backline. Now it is the death ball of Fnatic. They've got a Kogma, they've got an Udyr, they've got an Olaf. They just keep running forward. Arma trying to dash to safety, but the Polymorph comes out. There's no room. Humanoid wants to get something done, but his team is just getting slowly but surely shredded. Fnatic keep finding ways to stall this. Soon it's quite low cooldown at 31 minutes into the game. But Upset lost his cleanse, so he doesn't have that for the next fight. If Kaiser can land, a stun onto him. Then Mad Lions can collapse. Humanoid, you can see here, just pushing in mid and bots, making sure both waves crash into the Nexus, so at least one or two people have to keep answering. This is another cannon wave for Mad Lions. 11 seconds on Baron remaining. Fnatic lose a fight here, the game is over. If they find a fight, maybe they can hold on. Arma dashing out to safety, that's another tower taken down. No inhibitor towers left standing. Triple in him would feel just like the end of the game, regardless of compositional strength. Fnatic 8k down, holding on. Need to find a good shockwave, need to find good defensive tools to keep their damage threats alive. They need to defend this top inhibitor. Fnatic are going to have to find an engage eventually. Before running out of mana, Humanoid off to the side, but they just can't overcommit onto the Akali Shield, just dash away. It's a similar story for Arma. It's a flash out from Karzi, though. No shockwave, and now Mad Lions want to turn. Mad Lions want to find the fight. Hillisang going to be in trouble. Force to use Wild Growth on himself. Karzi in the midst of everyone. Arma dashing through. Whippo alive for a little bit, but it's just not enough. Mad Lions pull the trigger the second they see that cooldown used, and they find the fight in their favor. Adam wants to get something done, wants to turn, wants to burn. They begin to be able to get Arma. Is going forward. The Gore Drinker coming in. The Olaf is incredibly strong. If he can stick to a target, but Mad Lions are turning back. Niski caught out, he goes golden. Upset still untouched for now. Fnatic, can they hold this humanoid in the midst of everything? Adam still going, Adam still alive. Upset and Adam versus the world. And it is Upset and Adam who come out on top. Karzi and Humanoid waiting. Do they focus the champions? Do they focus the Nexus? The minions are here. Surely they should be able to finish it. Karzi stepping forward. The damage is there. The damage is not enough, however. Upset has to run. He cannot retreat into his own base. Still, the auto attacks are coming in. Mad Lions, eyes on the prize. Adam leaping forward. The Nexus Humanoid is slow. finding one. Humanoid just needs to get something back, but Upset just walks back to the Nexus to make sure Humanoid cannot turn. The dash through. Humanoid going in. Hillisang is here. The Nexus! Oh, can he get it? One auto! Whoa, that 2v2 went on for so long! Karzi trading his life.